What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network. Here we're going to continue the GPG analysis and how you can use these cypherpunk tools in order to protect your privacy and your liberty. Uh, so today we're going to talk about something quite interesting, and that is one of the really beautiful and, and nuanced approaches to the GPG uh, protocol, and that is the web of trust. And well, Apparently, wait, cypherpunks don't want to trust, want to verify. And the thing is, we can verify a lot with PGP, right? Cryptographic signatures, they are mathematically verifiable, like two plus two is four. And uh, thus, we don't have to trust on much, right? We can trust, we, we don't have to trust that a signature uh, is valid when we can actually solve it with the public key, right? And verify it. But um, it, it also then means that we have to make sure that um, the the communication uh, and the association of individuals to the key itself. Uh, that is where the main break point is, right? Uh, how do you know that uh, right here, this little uh, fingerprint is actually mine? And can you be really certain of that? Because if it's not mine, then all the trust that follows or, or all the verification that follows is wrong. Uh, so what we do assume is that this key is actually mine. And this is an, a great assumption uh, because, well, initially when, when I first generated this key and didn't tell anyone about it and I, I walked to the first person and was like, here, yeah, this is my public key. Do they know that? Like, have I done anything before that? Can I prove that this is actually mine? Well, I can prove with a signature, right? But still, there, there, it's, it's not as... Uh, as, as fluid uh, as a, a, a network of trusted peers actually is. Uh, so let's, let's get right into how this trust level is actually working. And uh, for example, here we're, we're uh, looking at uh, Peter Woolley's uh, key again. So we can actually see who has um, claimed that this key ID, or, or sorry, uh, this key ID corresponding to this uh, key fingerprint actually corresponds to Peter Woolley. Um, so all these individuals here who have with their master uh, GPG certification keys have signed their, uh, this, pu uh, this public key. They claim that they have verified that Peter Woolley is actually uh, the owner and user uh, of this key pair. Uh, and the, the more people attest to that and the more trustworthy the people are that attest to this correlation between key and owner, like meat space owner, uh, the better. Uh, so we can see here that there are like 59 signatures. Uh, so there are many different individuals who claim that they have verified uh, that this key actually belongs to Peter Woolley. And I don't know many of them. Like, uh, for example, here, uh, this, this key right here. I have no clue who, who owns this. I, I just know the, the fingerprint. Uh, and uh, I know the, uh, the date when it was created, right? Because that's actually in the fingerprint itself. But I do not know who controls this key. Um, and thus, I cannot really do anything with it, right? I, if, if I don't know who has signed, then I don't know if it is trustworthy or if it just was a troll uh, signing it with, with a sock puppet key. Um, however, there are a couple peers that I actually do know and that I do know the private, uh, the public key of, and that would be uh, Vladimir Pandelan or Jonas Schnelli or Marco Falke, uh, that uh, are, uh, the, and I do have these public keys. So I see that they have claimed uh, that this is, uh, this is Peter's key. However, with this command, I've not yet verified if that is actually true. I've just listed all the signatures. And so with a next step, um, the GPG check six command of the key ID uh, will show now only those signatures that I have the public key to verify. Uh, so this means that I can check the signature of Vladimir. Um, and I will see that it is valid here with the little exclamation point here next to the signature. Or I can see or can verify with Jonas Schnelli's public key if the signature is correct. Yes, it is. Uh, I can also do the same for Marco Falke's key. Yes, it is. And of course, I do have Peter Woolley's public key himself. And thus, I can here with, uh, I, I can uh, here claim that Peter Woolley also has correctly uh, verified that this or signed that this is actually uh, his key. Uh, and in total, there are 11 signatures, which I could authoritatively and without a shadow of a doubt, verify that they are valid. Um, 
However, right, there are several signatures from Peter Woolley himself, right, with, with a bunch of his different keys. Uh, so this means that actually I, I rely here on, well, four people, or actually just uh, three people, um, Jonas Schnelli, Marcus Falke, and uh, Vladimir van der Leyen. And uh, the, the question now is, right, uh, can I trust these? And we're, we're going to talk a bit later about if I can actually trust these individuals. But first and foremost, let's, let's look into, let's assume that I have verified myself that Peter Woolley has given me actually here this, this little uh, piece of paperwork. It says his key ID with his, paper, with his name. And I've seen him in Meetspace, right? I've, I've looked him in the eyes and, and seen his beard and <laughs> talked to him and actually verified that this is him and that he is actually... Uh, yeah, using this key. Um, and then what I could do is say I could claim or I could uh, say that I, with my key, I sign his key. With my master key, I sign his uh, master key in order that I can then uh, claim that I have verified myself that this is actually uh, his key. And of course, I have to make thorough due diligence uh, before I can uh, ever uh, really say that this is the case. So I should hear uh, signing signatures or signing keys should not be done lightly at all because this is really a web of trust. And if you do not very, 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 if you're not very much certain that this is actually Peter's key, do not sign it with your key. Don't. That's not how GPG is supposed to work. But then and when we do sign this, um, then we uh, can see here the entire um, key ring. So, right, that's, that's uh, his public master key. And then uh, the sub keys with some revoked keys as well. And as I said earlier, when we sign a key, we don't just sign the master key or just sign one sub key. We actually sign the entire key ring and all the user identities that are uh, corresponding to these, right? Um, so, uh, this again are you really certain that you want to or that you have verified that all of these uh, are uh, belong to peter well, if yes then we'll type in yes uh, and then though are you really really certain okay uh, so again because this is this is of utmost importance that you are certain and that you're not fooling around here okay uh, this is a, a very critical part to the gpg infrastructure uh, and don't mess it up here if you type in yes again, oh, well, what, what is that? The GPG is signed to fail the key because they did not have a secret key. Well, but I do have my UV key plugged in. Ah, but wait, the UV key only has my sub keys. And the sub keys I use for everyday email encryption and, and password encryption and all that fancy stuff. But I don't use it for something as critical as verifying the signature or the, the keys of someone else. And this means that such a critical, important task as signing another one's key has to be done with your certification master key. So this is the key that you have in your cold storage. And, and you're going to take out every year or so when you have sub-key rotation, right, to generate and, and uh, authenticate or certi certify as, uh, several new sub-keys. Or you do that when you are uh, signing another one's key. So it is really, really important here that because this is your master key, that you do this on a, a secure device. Uh, so again, right, as we did in the early videos, boot up tails, right? I cut out all the, the, uh, all the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi stuff. And then only uh, get your backup USB stick and encrypt it on the tails uh, ecosystem. And only then, right, uh, set up the, uh, the the GNU system and everything, and then sign with the key. So right now, this is a, a hot laptop. It's connected to the internet, has probably a bunch of malware on there, not Tails, just, just Ubuntu. And thus, it's not as secure that I want to put my precious, precious master key on this hardware device. So I'm not going to show you exactly how it would work or how, how it looks in real life, but uh, the, uh, it's it's really important to take a care of this, especially because you are taking out your master key out of cold storage. And that is always a critical. So always be careful when you're doing this. Okay, yeah. Uh, and here, of course, uh, because I don't have my master key here, uh, nothing has changed. But we can assume that everything went through and I have now signed um, Peter Woolley's key. Now, what do I do with the signed signature? Uh, because... How can I actually know that, for example, this email address is valid, right? Because um, I might not have yet verified that. 
And if I now upload uh, this, uh, this, uh, my signed key here in, in the key server, then uh, I maybe uh, have, have signed something or have claimed something that is actually not his email address. So a really neat way of making sure that the key that you have actually signed and, and verified is the one that uh, that corresponds to Peter, and especially to this email address. What I would do is that I would take the the text of the pub key that uh, and with my verified signature, and I would encrypt it uh, to Peter's uh, keys, and I would send it, uh, or I would encrypt and. Oh, no, I've signed it already, so I don't need to, uh, to sign that again. But uh, then I would send this ciphertext that is encrypted to Peter's uh, keys to Peter's Gmail ad account. And I would ask him uh, that he himself would upload the keys. Uh, why is that cool? Because in that way, I, I prove several things. First of all, I prove if Peter actually has the private keys, right? Because if he cannot decrypt uh, this ciphertext message, well, then it's not his keys. And uh, the good thing is that I haven't uploaded them to the key server yet, right? Uh, so nothing bad has happened because once they're, once they're uploaded on the key server, you cannot take them back, right? You've shared the information. You cannot claim information back. That's impossible. Uh, and same if Peter does not control this email address, well, he never gets the ciphertext as well. Uh, so if he does not control the keys or he does not control the email address, well, then he's not going to get my valid signature, which he then cannot use in the future. Uh, so that is quite nice. And what we prove further is when we ask Peter himself uh, to upload uh, this signed key, uh, well, then we know that he actually wants to, this information to be public. Because it might be that, that Peter uh, does, not want to, um, does not want to publicize his web of trust to the entire network, right? It might, it might be a pseudonymous uh, GPG account that, uh, that he actually does not want to be publicly known, for example. Then he himself would not publicize it, right? Um, so this is always tricky um, and always make sure that, that, the, that your counterparty here is uh, consenting uh, to the public keys being uh, uploaded to the server. And although this is a standard GPG setup, it might be in some cases not really uh, necessary or not really wanted. And thus sending the encrypted signed key to Peter's email address um, proves that he owns the keys, that he owns the email, and that he wants the signature or verification uh, to be public. Uh, so that is awesome, right? Um, and again, this is really, really critical. Uh, so don't mess it up. Because <laughs> again, now building, how can we build out of these signatures actually a web of trust? And uh, th that really, really is awesome. So um, first, we uh, want to edit uh, the key of Peter. Right, so we're going to edit here. Uh, we're we're going to open the GPG uh, terminal, and we can see. Okay, this is his key, right? And uh, these are his subkeys, and everything fine. And now we type in the command trust, and we can now here choose uh, five different trust levels uh, that apply again to his entire key ring. So not just to the master key, but to his entire key ring and all his user identities. And so what exactly does this trust level say? Well, it's important to realize that with the trust level, we are no longer handling any cryptographic stuff. So we're, we're not signing keys. We're not verifying keys or encrypting things. Uh, this is uh, no crypto, uh, crypt, uh, cryptographical stuff, uh, the trust level itself. But what we are claiming here or what we are, what we are setting here is how much do we trust Peter to verify the keys of others, right? Uh, so, for example, um, we know that Vladimir van der Laan has signed Peter's key, right? And we've verified the signatures. But do we trust Vladimir? Like, is he actually a good guy who knows how GPG works and who knows how to do this uh, securely and, and based on best practices? Well, uh, he is a uh, pretty decent cypherpunk. He's written a line of a code or two and, and uh, checked probably every single line in Bitcoin Core. <laughs> so yes, he knows how PGP works, hopefully. <laughs> and thus, and because I actually have verified Vladimir's uh, key as well, um, I can trust Vladimir to verify that Peter Woolley um, is the actual owner of this key. Uh, and only when I can, uh, only when I do trust um, Vladimir, then I 
and much more certain uh, that this is actually Peter Woolley's key. And of course, especially when I do trust Vladimir and I do trust Jonas and I do trust Marco, right? And now I have three individuals who I trust, who I trust that they know uh, how this stuff works, uh, that they are actually, uh, that they, they have uh, successfully and uh, after best practice standards uh, signed and verified uh, Peter Woolley's key. And although this is not the magic pill that, that will mean that Peter's key is perfect uh, and that I can trust it blindly, but it builds a web of trust, right? And the larger, the more robust this web of trust is, like here with Peter, with uh, how many signatures? Like 59 signatures? Like if, if, you, if you've verified all these signatures and if you know most of these peers, then you can be pretty damn certain that this is actually Peter's key. Um, but so the question is, how much do we trust Vladimir and Jonas and Marco? And that is the question, right? Initially, uh, we are going to uh, start out with... Uh, uh, with the basics here, which is just unknown, right? That is the default. Um, and th that's why it's not shown here. It's, it's just the default, right? It's unknown. I've never seen the key before. I've never really talked to that person. I mean, maybe I have, but just didn't bother to, to check anything. So the default is no clue if that person is trustworthy or not. Um, then the first thing that we can change here out of the uh, unknown status is to be undefined, right? I don't know or I don't want to say. Uh, so this would be, okay, uh, I have interacted with this individual, uh, so it's no longer uh, completely unknown, right? But so I, I am becoming active, but I neither want to say if this person is, tr is trustworthy or not. So I'm kind of neutral. This is kind of like a position where um, I, I cannot or I do not want to verify this now, but I want to do it in the future, right? Uh, then, you, then you could do that. That, that would be something like this, right? Uh -huh. Then the second option is I do not trust this. Uh, the trust is never, so not at all. This means I actually know uh, that Jonas here is a complete douchebag and that he's, that he's just throwing signatures left and right and, <laughs> that, this, right, and that he's not uh, really taking good care of this entire protocol and I just don't trust keys that he's signed. Um, so then if Jonas would sign uh, this key, uh, then it would be really in question if Peter's key is actually uh, this one, right? Because, well, if, if, the, if Jonas, the cheater, has signed it, well, then it might be a cheat overall, right? Uh, so this is, of course, also, right, handle this with, with, with care. If, if you don't know, if you do not trust uh, him, then don't put this. Uh, only put option two here if it's clear to you uh, that this is a fraud and that you absolutely do not trust this key. Uh, then what you could say here is, uh, I trust the key marginally, right? That is, uh, what do we have? Yeah, right here. And uh, this would mean that um, I, I somewhat trust these guys, but I'm not 100% certain. And let's say if maybe three of them, like let's say I trust all these three here marginally. Uh, well, if only one individual would have signed Peter's key, that would not have been enough uh, for me to be certain that this is actually Peter's key because I only trust, for example, Vladimir uh, marginally. However, if both Vladimir and Jonas and Marco uh, sign uh, Peter's keys, well, then I could be rather certain that although I only trust these individuals marginally, that together, if all these threes uh, sign uh, correctly, then they actually, uh, then this actually accumulates to something much more trustworthy. And this would then mean, uh, if I do trust all of them three here marginally, if I get a key that is signed by all three of them, then I consider this new key to be actually valid and corresponding to the user identity defined in it. Okay, uh, so that's why marginal thing is, is good, especially if you have something crazy like your 59 signatures, right? Uh, and then there's also here, uh, I trust fully. Uh, and this would mean that I, I know Peter, I, uh, or more like I know Vladimir, like he's a crazy, crazy smart cypherpunk and uh, he, he knows how to do this properly. And any key that he signs, I just assume that he's done the due diligence because he's just so trustworthy, right? Uh, and again, that is really tricky because, well, of course, if, if Vladimir is actually a good guy, then it's going to increase your web of trust and it's going to help you a lot to uh, specify if these keys are correct or not. 
But what happens if Vladimir is actually malicious and he signs the key of, let's say, Satoshi Nakamoto uh, and, and claims, yeah, oh, 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 fake Toshi is actually Satoshi, right? Well, if you have used, uh, or well, if you have set a full trust to Vladimir's key, you would then also trust that fake Toshi's key is actually Satoshi Nakamoto's key. So always be very careful when you set full trust uh, because you don't really know if you can trust that person fully, right? Unless you're really certain. Uh, I would go so far as to say that with uh, with Peter or with uh, like with all these guys, I do trust them. I mean, I trust them to build Bitcoin Core, <laughs> so I kind of trust them to handle uh, GPG as well. <laughs> Um, so that would be, for example, here uh, the uh, the decision that I would make. Right, I do trust them fully, um, and that that would be here decision four. But what is the decision five here? I trust ultimately, and this is reserved for only your own keys, right? Because when when they're your own keys, well, you kind of have to trust them. Because if you don't trust your own keys, well then you can throw everything away and start over and generate secure keys how we've done it in the first couple of videos. Uh, so I trust ultimately is really only uh, for your own keys. So uh, don't throw that out lightly. Uh, don't, uh, this will be set automatically uh, for any key that you generate. Uh, so again, um, most of the time it's going to be uh, nothing at all, uh, right? I have no clue if I trust these people. I have no clue if, if Jonas Schnelli actually uh, is too good. No, that's going to be the standard. Um, and not that often you will uh, completely say, no, I do not trust at all this. Most of the time I would say it's going to be marginal uh, and some of the times full. Uh, but again, this really depends on your unique situation. And don't take this lightly. Again, this is really, really important. The web of trust here is one of the beautiful features of GPG, and it works pretty damn well if you apply these best practices. Okay, and so now that we've seen that, we see that the trust has been changed, right? It's been set to full, um, which is awesome, right? Uh, so th th this really helps here uh, with... Uh, uh, with, the, with, uh, with seeing this at a glance. Uh, and if the signature right here would have actually worked, uh, then I would have seen here the validity, the validity to be um, true as well. Uh, so right now it's unknown because I've not yet signed with my master key, uh, Peter's public key, uh, but I could, and then this number here would change as well. Okay, we save everything here uh, with the quit uh, command and then we leave the GPG console and we can now list all the keys and we can also see that we have from Peter Woolley, where is he? Who finds him first? Right, there he is. Um, and then, uh, where is it? Uh, unknown, unknown. Uh, okay, well, we, we can we can check it here in the uh, GNU privacy assistance as well. And you're refreshing this, we can see, yeah, okay, the trust here is actually full. Uh, so, so that is quite nice uh, to have that. And then, for example, if I also trust Vladimir, then I could here uh, set owner trust. Again, unknown, never, marginal, full, ultimate. Oh, I do trust Vladimir actually quite a lot. Because again, like he's checked literally every single line of code running on your node. <laughs> so if you don't trust him, well, it's pretty, pretty tough. <laughs> um, and again, I've also met Vladimir in person, right? And, and I've uh, checked his key ID, actually. Uh, so this is something that I can trust here. I, I've not yet signed his key, uh, but I do trust that he knows how PGP works. And that... I think uh, covers everything. This is the entire, um, yeah, the, in the entire endeavor <laughs> of how you can uh, build your web of trust. Uh, so maybe to uh, to recap everything here. So the the main issue is that we do not know if this public key actually corresponds to Peter Woolley, like the the meat space real Peter Woolley. Uh, and what we can do though is we can sign uh, with our master. Uh, certification key, we can sign his public key. And then we can claim that we have verified that this public key is actually Peter's. And of course, we, we verify this with our own reputation. So if you mess up, people are going to know. Uh, so take care again here. And the cool thing is that when, for example, like here, Peter, he has amassed many, many different signatures, like 59 of them. And 
uh, this means that we know that several different individuals claim that they have verified that this key is actually Peter's. But well, we do not know if they have actually verified it or if we can trust that they have verified it correctly. Uh, so just the signatures and the verification of these signatures is not going to be enough. We also have to have a trust level on, uh, on how much do we trust the individual behind a known public key to verify the validity and the correspondence of a public key of another. Um, so the standard would just be nothing and you can put it, I don't know, or I don't care, or I explicitly do not trust uh, any key that has been signed uh, by this quote-unquote malicious actor uh, or would be I trust marginally. This means if several of these marginal trustees have signed a key, then I assume it is valid or well, it is corresponding to the identity. Uh, and if I trust it fully, uh, that means that I actually have in meat space, like touch the face of Peter Woolley and, and know that it's not just a hologram or something, um, then yes, I can trust this key fully. But the ultimate uh, trust is reserved for my own keys because, well, they're mine. <laughs> so I kind of have to trust them. Uh, Pierce, I, I hope I conveyed this and again, Take, take good care with this. Don't lightly sign any random keys and uh, don't just broadcast the keys um, that you have signed without verifying yourself uh, that they are actually correct. So when you yourself sign uh, someone else's public key with your own master key, make sure it's on secure hardware. And when you have signed it, then encrypt uh, this signed public key with the public key of this individual and then send it to his email address to find in the user ID. And this way you can prove if the key is actually controlled by this individual, if the email address is controlled by this individual, and you can ask him to himself upload this to a key server, thus proving that he actually wants uh, this signature to be public. Um, so I think this covers pretty much all the best practices or some of the best practices of how you can make, uh, how you can build your web of trust. And again, the cool thing is that because we have a, a long master key, a long-term master key uh, that never expires, that we'll use for 30, 50, 100 years, we can build up a bunch of signatures, right? Uh, so if we have, uh, if we have a, a huge web of trust with a master key, we can take this key identity and this web of trust that we've built uh, over a long time period while still rotating the sub keys um, uh, to have uh, secure fresh keys that are still corresponding to the master key and therefore the web of trust of this key. Yeah, I, th I think we cover quite a lot uh, of GPG and uh, there are a couple things that I still want to touch upon um, in, in the next couple of videos, uh, but I think we're somehow wrapping up slowly. So if you have any final question about this entire thing, right? Uh, ask in the comments, ask, uh, reach out on, on direct me messages, Twitter or, or Telegram, or of course, uh, send me a PGP message, right? Uh, so if, if you have a couple questions, uh, generate your own key uh, and then encrypt it. Or, well, no, you actually don't even have to uh, generate your own key. You could just encrypt a message uh, with my public key. That's rather easy. <laughs> and then you can send me your question and I can, well, then over clear text because I don't have your public key because you have some troubles, but I could still then uh, answer your question. Uh, so. Yeah, uh, if you have any questions, please reach out uh, and apply this knowledge, please. Uh, use these tools, use these technologies to defend your liberties because well, also privacy likes company. So if, if I'm the only one using GPG, then it's not fun at all. <laughs> there is a network effect. And although you are using GPG already every single day, um, you are not using it with your own keys and you're, you're not in full control over this protocol. And with this setup that I've explained here over the last couple of videos, you are in full control of your keys. And that is awesome. That's exactly how it should be. Uh, so peers, take good care, encrypt your backups, encrypt your passwords, and don't set the trust of someone else um, uh, to something that you, uh, or to, to a level that is not accurate. And especially don't sign someone else's key if you yourself are not absolutely certain that the key actually corresponds to the identity. Pierce, thank you very much for joining me here again on the World Crypto Network and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.